If you get your Bibles out with me tonight, let's go to the book of Ephesians just for a moment. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians 3.20. And then we'll start up here. Ephesians 3.20. And when you get there, say amen. amen. All right. It says, Now unto him that is able to do. This is talking about the Lord. Now unto him, now unto the Lord, who is able, that word able there is the same word as powerful. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Notice now these words. According to the power that works in us. Let me read that to you again. Now unto him, <coughs> pardon me, that is able to do exceeding abundantly above. That means more than we could ever ask for. More than we could ever think up. Who is able to do above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us or the power that is energized in us, a lot of people have this idea. They're asking God to move from heaven or work from heaven and send them power or send the miracle yeah. or send the blessing or send it when in fact your body's the temple of the living God. Amen. And the power of God is right inside you. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of of glory. Say that with me. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Many people spend their whole lifetimes in church and do not know that the Lord lives inside them. And that what the Lord is doing is that his power is in them. So tonight I'm going to spend a little time convincing you in the word of God. If you have any questions, just raise your hand. If you want to say something, just raise your hand. But convincing us in this Bible study that that power of God is for you. Amen. God is not powerful for himself. God is all powerful to do it for you. Amen. To bless you. Amen. To strengthen you. Amen. To have that power for your sake. That strength for your sake. So what God does above what you can ask or think, he does it by the power that he has on the inside of you. I don't get up and say, Lord, send, send, send your power to help me today. I say, Lord, your power is already in me today. Let me believe in it. Let me believe in the power of God in my body today. Let me believe in the power of God in my life today. In Jesus' name. Have you even got the power of God in you right now? Amen. Well, Christ in you, the hope of glory. But the enemy wants to lie to you and convince you that you're on your own. Or the power of God is in heaven and you're down here and you're powerless. You are not powerless. Amen. Are you with me now? You are not powerless. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. Let's just look at some scriptures. Remember, if you have any questions, be sure and just let me see you so that I can acknowledge you and ask them. If you have anything you want to say, hallelujah, God's good, amen? amen. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse number 10. Listen to this. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint, if you give up, if you fall apart in the day of adversity, your strength is small. What we're doing here is that we're going to strengthen you tonight that you won't fall apart or faint or give in in the day of adversity, but you'll win the battle. You'll win the victory. You're more than a conqueror. 
And you have to believe that the power of God is inside you. You have to believe that the strength of the Lord is in your body. You have to believe that his ability is on the inside of you. Amen. And you're going to believe it with me. Say amen. amen. So, thank you. So when you feel weak in your body, when you feel weakness in your body, because of whatever reason you're under attack, something's trying to work in your body, something's going out of balance in your body, you're going to have to believe that the power of God is still in your body. Amen. You have to depend on that power of God. You're going to have to lean on that power of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you with me now? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalms 62, verse 11. Psalms 62. I got me an amen corner up here. Hallelujah. Psalm 62, verse 11. And let's strengthen ourselves in this, in Jesus' name. Psalms 62, 11. All right, y'all with me now? God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. It's his. Power does not belong to the devil. Power belongs to God. Amen. Power doesn't belong to a government. Power belongs to God. Amen. Can I convince you that the power that you need to live, the power that you need to succeed, the power that you need, the strength that you need to live an abundant, more than a conqueror life comes from God. Amen. All power. All power belongs from God. When I went to Africa, I had to preach twice a day, nine in the morning to 2,000 ministers every morning. And I spoke, they, they wanted me to speak for four hours. I preached from nine to one, four solid hours. And then at four o'clock, I would preach downtown in a huge setting, 40, 50,000 people. And I would speak there and pray for people for sometimes up to six hours. So I was standing there in front of people ministering 10 hours a day for 17 days and sleeping with lizards and sleeping in, 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 in most of the food I couldn't eat. I'm I just not into cow tongue, you, you know. But God so strengthened me. He strengthened me to be able to do it. I lost 27 pounds in my body. But God strengthened me to do it, to cast out devils, to... God's got supernatural strength for you. God's got supernatural strength for the times that we live in. God's got power for you to raise your family, to work the job that you have, to do everything that you have. He's got the power, the ability, the might, the strength to do it. You have to believe he does. Are you believing it with me? Say amen. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Psalms 27 1. Psalms 27 1. You need in your life, you need a booklet. You need something that you can grab to get strength. You need something with strength scriptures. Scriptures <coughs> that give you strength. Scriptures that increase power. Scriptures that give you might. Scriptures that encourage you, that make you stronger. Amen. Scriptures that encourage you to make you able to do it, to finish the work, to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. 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 Scriptures that you constantly lean on that are stronger than a sickness, stronger than diabetes, stronger than cancer, stronger than the devil, stronger than a defeat, stronger than any weakness. You need an arsenal of scriptures to strengthen you. Yes. Y'all going to agree with me? Say amen. amen. Thank you. Many of you, that's the first time you've ever been told that you need scriptures available to you to strengthen you. To strengthen you. There have been times I've stayed all night in the hospital with people praying them out of situations and just didn't even sleep. Just walked right into church on Sunday morning 
and preach and nobody ever even know that I would be up all night long. Nobody could see it because I claim these scriptures on strength from the Lord. Amen. You can claim them even if you're having thyroid trouble. God's strength is greater than thyroid trouble. God's strength is greater than older age. God's strength is greater. His power, his ability, his might. Are you with me now? Amen. All right, stay with me now. Glory to God. So you see this, Psalms 27 again, verse number 1, 27, verse number 1. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So with that strength in my life, I don't have anything to be afraid of. Amen. I'm not going to be afraid of a sickness. I'm not going to be afraid of a disease. I'm not going to be afraid of anything. The Lord is the strength of my life. Amen. Y'all with me now? Say it with me. The Lord is the strength of my life. Come on. Let's say it again. The Lord is the strength of Yes, glory to God. The Lord is the strength of my life. Hallelujah. A few years ago, I picked up uh, uh, some stuff out of a backyard that I was helping clean out, and it, I picked it up by myself, and it was way too heavy for one person, and it weakened my back. And for several weeks, man, I, man, I just, I was having to be careful with my back. I was buying them things, you know, that heat up and put on your back, and Oh, my God, I kind of, you know, I was walking around like I was 180 years old, and, and uh, I got this scripture that the Lord is the strength of my life, and I got up every morning, and I said, the Lord is the strength of my life, and I command that strength into my back, and God healed my back, and I've never had any more back trouble again in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, the Lord will be the strength of your life wherever you need it. Come on. How many of y'all love me? Say amen. 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 All right, let's keep going. Psalms 37, 39. Psalms 37, 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. How many know what trouble is? Y'all know what trouble is? Financial trouble, physical trouble, mental trouble, family trouble, any kind of trouble. How I many you know? They, they, they know what trouble is. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, amen. <laughs> How many y'all understand trouble? Now, the moment, listen carefully, the moment you sense trouble, you need the scripture. You're my strength in time of trouble. You're my strength in time of trouble. When there's trouble in your home, trouble in your body, trouble in your finances, trouble in your life, the moment there's trouble, the devil starts talking. The moment there is any trouble, the enemy of your life starts lying to you, starts speaking about that trouble, starts magnifying that trouble, so that he can weaken your mind, weaken your thinking, weaken your emotion. You have to say, wait a minute, in the time of trouble, the Lord is now the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Come on. He's my strength in time of trouble. Now the enemy will throw out a little trouble somewhere to see if you fall apart. Luke 18, 1 says men ought to pray and not to faint. Don't faint, don't fall apart. And if you feel like that you've got a little fainting in you, a little, little giving up in you, that's when you call somebody like me. You say, well, you're busy. Listen, don't listen to the lie of the devil. You always call somebody that is as strong as you are, equal in strength or more powerful than you are. You never call anybody that will uh, help weaken you. Amen. You gotta call somebody that'll help strengthen you. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. 
Can you imagine calling on the phone? I, I need you to pray for me. I don't feel good. Well, I hadn't been feeling good either. Maybe we both got the same thing. <laughs> How many with me say amen? amen? Oh, my God. He's your strength in time of trouble. I face trouble with people every day. I have learned over the years how to let the Lord be my strength in time of trouble. When they call me about an infant being born that is not going to live, that's trouble. And watch God strengthen that baby and come out of that trouble. Anybody want to talk to me? The Lord is your strength in time of trouble. When a person is in the hospital bleeding to death, he is your strength in time of trouble. Amen. They called me on the phone. A woman had her hand cut off at the, was it the, is it the cookie factory? Was it the cookie factory? She had her hand cut off. She got into, her hand got into that machine down there and it cut it off. And they rushed her into Hendrix Hospital and some people called me on the phone and I went down there and I walked in there and the, the lady saw me and a lot of them in the ER in the area know who I am. And I walked in there, and there she was. And that every time her heart would beat, that blood just boom, pumping up out of that arm. And I walked over there, and there was her mama. And when I walked up, her mama, and uh, I knew the mama, and she, she just said, let's pray, Pastor. And I said, I'm going to pray. And God is my witness. God began to touch that hand, that arm, and stop that blood flow. That girl was bleeding to death, and God stopped it in front of my eyes. How many know God is a good God? He will strengthen you in the time of trouble. Come on. How many are going through any kind of trouble right now? Don't be embarrassed. Trouble right now. The Lord is your strength in time of trouble. The Lord, what is the one thing you need in time of trouble? Strength from the Lord. I pray strength on your right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray stronger that you'll become stronger than the trouble. Amen. You're going to receive it from me? Amen. I pray right now you will become stronger than the temptation. Yes. Stronger than the trouble. Yes. Stronger than the giant. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego became stronger than the fire. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and the fire couldn't burn them. They actually became stronger than fire. Yes. Oh, my God. And the Bible says that they didn't even have the smell of smoke. They got smoke repellent, too. <laughs> God's got smoke repellent. <laughs> We're just looking for a mosquito repellent. <laughs> How many y'all love the Lord? Say Amen. Oh, my God. When I went into that, where those lepers were in South America, and they told me, man, you're going to get leprosy because I wouldn't put anything on. I wouldn't put the gloves on. I wouldn't put the mask on. I, I wouldn't put the stuff on because I didn't. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I know you can heal them if I put the stuff on, but I believe you can really heal them if I've got the stuff off. Amen. And I didn't get the leprosy. I did not get the leprosy. And they didn't keep the leprosy. Amen. The strength of God, the power of God is stronger than anything. Amen. And here's your strength in time of trouble. So he's your strength tonight in the name of Jesus. He's stronger than that. He's bigger than that. Years ago when Brother Hagen would pray for people, they'd walk up to him and they'd say, I've got three months to live. I'm dying of cancer. And he'd just start laughing in front of their face. He'd laugh out loud. And it would offend some of the people. And they'd say, why are you laughing? He says, I'm laughing because nothing's too hard for the Lord. Amen. Let's just smile at that trouble tonight. Let's just laugh at that trouble tonight. Let's just laugh at that weakness tonight. And just laugh about it because it's not too big for God. Y'all believe it with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's keep going. Everybody okay? All righty. Let's go to Psalms 2911. <coughs> Psalms 2911. So 
so, Pastor, what do you do? Every night, every night, I claim his blood over every part of my body. Amen. I claim his power over my body. I claim his blood over your body. You say, why are you telling me? So you'll believe it and receive it in the name of you. That you'll set yourself in agreement with me. Come on. Mm. I plead that blood over you, that strength of God in your bones, in your muscles. Mm. Are you with me now? Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Psalms 37, right? 39. Is that it? Where we're at? 29? 29 11. On my way to heaven. The Lord will give strength to his people. Y'all kind of quiet. The Lord, not maybe, but the Lord will. Before you ever ask it, it says he will give you strength and he will give you peace. The Lord is going to give you strength. Let me say that again. The Lord is going to give you strength. The Lord is going to give you strength. Are you agreeing with me? And it's, it's more strength than what you're facing. It's more strength than what you're going through. Hallelujah. Matt was telling me about over the last months where he worked, his boss had come and given a lot of his clients to another person. And Matt and I talked on the phone and I said, Matt, let me tell you something, the devil's not going to win. Matt said, no, the devil's not going to win. We were in agreement, the devil's not going to win. I said, just stay steady. He said, Pastor, I'm just going to stay steady. And I'm just going to trust God. Stay steady. And I know the enemy lied to Matt's mind. Come on. You're nothing. You're going to fail. You're not going to be able to pay your bills. Come on, I know, I know the devil. I know the devil told him, got that new good-looking boy. I know the devil lied to his mind. The devil cared every kind of thing in the world. But Matt stayed faithful and steady. He could have run. He could have run. One of the guys that was a boss of a place, uh, the people that he invited to the prayer service worked there. The, the, uh, the boss came up to him and said, I heard what you did for so-and-so. I admire you so much and respect you for it. That favor just began to grow. Yeah. Well, the boss came back and said, all that I took away from you, I give it just back to you. Yeah. I just give it all back to you. Yeah. Is that what happened, Matt? Yeah. How many of y'all with me say amen? One of the men in our church, he actually quit his job. He got mad, he quit his job. And he came to me and said, I quit my job. What do you think I ought to do? I said, I think you ought to go back and just tell him I'm coming back to work. I said, just tell him because the Lord is the strength of your life. Just walk up to him and tell him I'm coming back to work and let's just, let's just get past this and let's go on. I said, you've got the strength of God with you. Let's do it. He walked in and told him, and they gave him a $5 an hour raise. Let me know God's a good God. Amen. The Lord is stronger than what you're going through right now. Yeah. That's right. That's right. The Lord is stronger than what you're going through right now. Yes. And he'll give you the strength so you can mount up out of it and get out of it in the name of Jesus. I'm y'all with me now. Say amen. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Acts 10 38 says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Holy Ghost and power. Anointing Holy Ghost and power. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. 
who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The anointing of God, the Holy Ghost of God, the power of God, hallelujah, gets rid of all the work of the devil and heals everybody. Are you with me now? Now, the Bible says that if I go somewhere, they deny the power, I'm to get away from that. If they deny the power of God, I'm to stay away from that. Because if I get that stuff into me, then I won't believe in the power of God anymore. Oh, somebody say amen. Amen. This is the truth now. So God had it. God, it's God's. God gave it to Jesus He wants to give it to you, Luke 24, 49. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Who did he say that to? He said that to his disciples. Endued. Uh, Let me give you a better word, clothed. That's Luke 24, 49. He said, I want you to tarry till you be clothed with power. (coughs) God wants to clothe you with power. Oh, man. God wants to clothe you with power. If you listen very much to Cleo's testimony, he was a drug addict and he sold drugs. And he was with the number one drug dealing guy of this whole area. But when God set him free, he didn't go through any withdrawals. Not one. Not one. Not one minute. God's got the power to set you free, and you won't go through no withdrawal. Yes, amen. Amen. Have y'all love me now? (laughs) A man in our church smoked for 45, 50 years. Smoked four packs a day. Came to our church service the first time God delivered him and set him free. Amen. He said, Pastor, I never had a want one time. Never had a desire. Walk completely away from it. When he went to the doctor, before he went, he'd gone to the doctor and his lungs were messed up. When God set him free that day, he went back to the doctor and the doctor said, I don't know what happened to you, but it's like you've never smoked a day in your life in your lungs. When God sets you free, He sets your body free. He sets your lungs free. This man had a pickled liver (laughs) from drinking a fifth of whiskey every day for over 40 years. And it was like he never drank one drop in his life. God set his liver free. God set his liver free. Y'all with me now? Hallelujah. A man in our church, they told him the other day, you got COPD. He walked up to me and said, Pastor, I got COPD. I said, no, you got J-E-S-U-S. Well, guess what? One, J-E-S-U-S. Now, he don't have COPD. God wants to clothe you with strength. God wants to, you know that when you get up tomorrow, you're wearing his strength and power Everywhere you go, I got it on me, I got it on me, I got it on me. I got it on me. Say it with me, I got it on me. That becomes your adorning. That becomes your look. (laughs) Uh, Hallelujah. 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 So, Acts 1-8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Amen. And you shall be witnesses of me. You shall be witnesses of me. Power to be a witness of Jesus. What does that mean? That means that you can keep witnessing the same power that Jesus used in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. 
We were down in Satilio, Old Mexico. That day they had invited us over to Monterey to preach on TV. I was there with two other young preachers like myself. So we went and bought hats and canes. And we strolled into the television station because we was going to preach on TV. And we ministered on TV. And so that night they brought a man in a wheelchair to the service. My brother Don isn't here tonight, but he was here at that service. And all of a sudden, that man in that wheelchair, he was blind. He had been hit by a car because he was blind, and it had paralyzed him, and he was in a wheelchair. The power of the Holy Spirit hit that man. He jumped straight up out of that wheelchair. Not only did it heal his bones and his body, but it gave him perfect eyesight. He, he took off running around the building. Now, if you've ever been in an Hispanic church full of the power of God, everybody jumped up and started running around that building with him. <laughs> it was wonderful. And then Fiesta was on. Man, the next night we ate tamales till the world was flat nearly. I mean, people came from everywhere to celebrate the power of God healing that blind man. Jumping up out of that wheelchair. God's got more power than a wreck and what it did to your body. God's got more power than blindness. In fact, will you believe God with me that we'll see the blind eyes open between now and the end of this year in our services in the name of Jesus. Are you with me now? So you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power. Luke 10, 19. Are you with me now? If Jesus said it to them, he said it to me. Because he's no respecter of persons. Behold, I give unto you power, which is also the word authority. I give you power. How many know if you have authority, you have power? Yes. Behold, I give you power to tread. I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I give you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is where I'm trying to take you and me that you know you have so much power in God nothing can hurt you. I grew up as a young minister under a pastor named T.C. Burkett. T.C. Burkett was married to Inez Smith Burkett. Her daddy was called Old Dad Smith. He was an old time preacher and he believed in healing. When I started working with T.C. Burkett, I was 19 at the great full gospel assembly on Westmoreland in Dallas across the street from Kimball High School. Anybody been in that area before? You know where that is. He would take me on Saturdays and I'd preach on the radio with Brother Burkett and David Nunn and R.W. Schambach and uh, Lester Roloff. Anybody know who Lester Roloff is? Let me just tell you so that Tom and Beth will know who Lester Roloff is. You can look him up online. He would take young children. His home was, were in Corpus Christi. He didn't have 10 or 15. He would have 50, 100, 200. I know, I know. Tom's saying, Pastor, be careful. <laughs> Don't throw nothing at me. <laughs> and he would bring them in and he would teach them about God. 
And oh, he was fought tooth and toenail. Lester Roloff. Mm -hmm. And I would preach with these preachers. Well, T.C. Burkett would tell the story in Oklahoma. He'd go to Valley in Oklahoma. There was one red light. There was a school. They invited him to preach at the school cafeteria. Four men in town didn't like it, so they poisoned the water uh, there. They would catch rainwater, and the people would drink that, and they poisoned the drinking water there at the school. And they waited for people to start dying that came to the revival meeting at the school from the water. Nobody was dying. So about a week they came down the aisle, all four of them, and said, we came to repent and give our life to Jesus Christ because we put enough poison in the water to kill everybody in town so that everybody would think you were false, but now we know we are false and your God is God. And they repented before Almighty God. And nobody was hurt. There is a power in God where nobody gets hurt. Amen. Amen. Come on now, come on now. Try to keep yourself down. Hold yourself. Constrain yourself. There is a power in God where nobody gets hurt. It happened for the children of Israel. They would be surrounded. They would be under attack. The Lord would send some kind of crazy power in. The enemy would kill himself, and nobody would get hurt. Lord, we believe in your power that nobody will get hurt. Amen. Would you just give the Lord a little crazy praise with me? <laughs> hurt. No hurt. Y'all stand up with me? All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Ooh, I got to Harry. 2 Corinthians. Don't you love the Lord? I do. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> Second Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Y'all with me now? This is not the scripture that I wanted. Let me make sure. Maybe it's 1 Corinthians. Yes, 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry. Just take a guess. It has to be either one or two. Okay, it's only my sixth mistake today. Y'all got to forgive me. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. All preaching, every preaching, every preaching sermon you hear should have demonstration of power. There should be power around preaching. Didn't you love it when all them people come down to get the blood on them Sunday morning? Didn't you love it? I think we had over 10 first-time visitors just Sunday morning. Didn't you love it? My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of a man, but in the power of God. What should your faith be? It should not be in a pastor. It should not be in a priest. 
It should not be in a teacher. It should be in the power of Almighty God. God did not send pastors to lead you. He sent them to feed you. It's the job of the Holy Ghost to lead you. You do not go to a church that needs you. You go to a church that feeds you. Are you with me? Well, Brother Randy, what is a pastor? What is the pastor? A word pastor simply means to feed. Everybody say to feed. feed. That's all it is. That's all it is. To feed you the word of God. Are you with me now? Why? So your faith will be in the power of God. Amen. Faith in the power of God. Say, I have my faith, have my faith. in the power of God. So when I read the Bible, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I know that I have faith if I believe in the power of God. I know that I have faith if I am now peaceful. Even though things are going on, I am peaceful because the power of God is going to take care of it. I know that I have faith if I'm resting on the fact that the power of God's going to take care of this. If I'm worried, I'm not in faith. But if I'm peaceful, I'm trusting the power of God. (coughs) Are with me now? Okay, okay. Philippians 4.13. I can, I can, not I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Y'all remember the train? I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Then gets downhill, I knew it could, I knew it could, I knew it could. Right? I can do all things. How many things? Doesn't matter. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say it together with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How many of y'all going to believe that with me? Say amen. amen. I can. The Lord's going to strengthen me to do it. The Lord is going to strengthen me to do it. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Are you getting stronger while you listen to me? Are you going to put your faith in the power of God? Not in the wisdom of a man. It's my job for you not to see me, but to see Jesus. It's my job for you to hear Jesus in my sermons. It's my job for you to hear Jesus in my message. Not me, but Jesus. Because if the Bible says I'm dead, but my life is hid with Christ in God. I no longer live Christ that lives in me. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1.18. Oh, we're hurrying. <coughs> the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us that are saved... It is the power of God. How many believe in the cross? How many believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? That's the power of God. How many believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? If you believe in the cross, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross, if you believe God raised him from the dead on the third day, you believe in the power of God. If you believe in that power, you believe nothing is impossible with God. It's for you too. Remember, everything God does, he does by how much of his power is inside you. So you've got to become a temple of his power. People don't understand. If you're raised up in a church that believes in the power of God, and then you go off and go into some church that doesn't believe in the power of God, you're opening up yourself to some mess. Yeah. You're right. Amen. 
I got called. My family will verify this. You can ask my wife, my mother, some others here. That I get called to go to offices of churches and the pastor won't stay there. He leaves to go in. And they wanted me to pray for a woman that had some devils. They called me and they said, we don't believe in devils, but she has devils. I got called to go to the First Baptist Church in Anson, Texas and go inside that office and cast the devil out of a woman and only the secretary would stay outside. Nobody else would even be there. And it's happened in other places. Have y'all with me? Say amen. amen. And nine times out of ten, these people that I pray for, I said, how did you grow up? Well, we grew up believing in the, but now we don't believe that anymore. We've been told that's not for today. It is still for today. Amen. You're opening yourself up when you, when you go from knowing the power to where you don't believe in the power no more. Yeah. You can't take a blood-bought person and then move into a church that doesn't preach the blood. You can't take a person that believes in the power of the Holy Spirit and then move them into one that don't believe into it. Amen. You can't take one that believes in healing and then goes into a church that says God doesn't heal anymore. You're opening yourself up for trouble. Amen. You're moving from a Holy Spirit to a religious spirit. Yeah. Amen. I mean, Y'all love me now, say amen. amen. Okay. You've got to believe in the power of the cross. We're almost through. Colossians 1, 11. How many of y'all glad you come tonight? Are you glad you come? I'm glad you came too. Colossians. The first healing service I ever had by myself was in Caldwell, Texas. And the little church ran 12 people. Brother Spittler was the head of the church. He was 190. And he said, Randy, before you move down here, you can come stay with me. I thought, sure, why not? I didn't know that... I was eating supper with him at 7. We got up from supper. I helped him with the dishes. He said, it's time to go to bed. Good night. <laughs> then I really knew he was 290. <laughs> but I wanted God to do something, and the Lord said, tell everybody you're having a healing service. So we were running about 18 then. Well, we were running 500. We could only catch 18. Help me, Lord. So the church was full. Well, a lady brought her about a 10-year-old son and sat down on the second row. He had never walked in his life. Ten. He had never taken a step. She laid a little mat down there and just laid him on that mat. And I'm not talking this mat. I'm talking a, another kind of mat. And I, when I see it, the church packed. I was 20. And I see this church packed, and I turn around and say, God, why couldn't you just send people with a cold, a headache, the flu, sneezing? <laughs> and so when I called for the people, she reached down there and grabbed that 10-year-old boy and walked up there holding that boy, crying, I want God to heal my boy. And God healed. I'm going to tell you that he healed that boy in spite of me. And I used to think, I thought for a few years, I didn't even have faith. And the Lord told me one day, you had enough faith to put it in the newspaper Amen. that I was going to heal people. Amen. You had enough faith to tell people, God's going to heal people that day. Amen. He said, quit, quit knocking yourself down. I have seen over 10,000 people healed since then. 
All you got to do is keep your faith in God. Amen. Have y'all love me? Say amen. amen. All right, we're in, we're in Colossians, right? Colossians 111. Strengthened with might, all might. Strengthened with all might. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. This is how strong you want to get. That you are patient and long-suffering with joyfulness. Because when you lose your joy, you're losing your strength. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm telling you? You want so much of God's might that you can stay joyful. Ephesians 1.19, oh Lord, I got six minutes. Are y'all getting these in you? Yes. I'm feeding you, ain't I? Did it taste good? Mm-mm, good. Mm-mm, good. <laughs> Tom, that day I prayed for you when you were here. What did you feel when I laid my hands on you and prayed for you that day? Did you feel anything? (laughs) But you felt the warmness and the power of God. What he said is that he felt a sensation in his heart, like there was something in his heart. It was a confirmation, I believe, of the Lord in you. And since that day, he's had no more of those leg pains. No more. Give the Lord a praise and praise. Well, you see, what I did is that I knew I was going to pray for him, so I kept my hands on a heating pad all night long. <laughs> no, that's not true. It's the power of God. It's the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. How many love Jesus? Say amen. It has nothing to do with me. It's all Jesus. Ephesians 1.19. What is, what is, the exceeding greatness of his power to us. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us? How much of his power is he going to put to us? How much of his power is he going to release our direction? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own hand. So what is he saying? How much of my power am I going to give you The same power that I used to raise Jesus from the dead is what I'm going to give you. Let me believe you got it right now. That's what you got to believe. You got to believe that that is in you. In the name of Jesus, you will renew your strength. You will renew your strength. That power of God, Father, it's in my hands, it's in my feet. It's in my mind, it's in my brain, it's in my body, it's in my heart, it's in my liver, it's in my lungs, it's in, it's in my muscles, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. In the name of Jesus, it's in my kidneys. In the name of Jesus, it's in my bladder. In the name of Jesus, the power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is in your body right now.
That's how much power he wants to give you. That's how much power is really inside you. Oh, I just got a little bit of the power of God. No, 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 no. You got the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. God told Dr. Summerall to get in his plane. Well, he lived in Indianapolis, Indiana. So Dr. Summerall got in his plane and flew to South America. If you know about Dr. Summerall, he had the only KC-135 in existence in a ministry in the United States. He couldn't buy it from the government because the government cannot sell military planes to individuals, they'd sold them to the Venezuelan government and Dr. Summerall bought it from the government. You can buy them from the government of a foreign country that they have bought, but you cannot buy them directly like that. At least you couldn't then. So Dr. Summerall would use it and put food in it and they'd fly the food all over the world. So Dr. Summerall flew and they told him, he just they're flying. He didn't know where to go except God said, see that field, land in that field. They landed in that field. Dr. Summerall, they opened the door. He walked out. The planes just started walking, walking a little bit in the jungle, walked to a clearing, and there was a beautiful mansion in a clearing. God said, go into that house and set a girl free. Remember, he had no direction except from the Holy Spirit. He had no invitation except from the Holy Spirit. He's just being led by the strength of God. He uses his own plane. He uses his own fuel. He flies, walks, gets there, comes to the gate. The guards are there. He says, I'm Lester Summerall. Tell whoever owns this that I'm here to pray for some girl. You can read it in his books. He goes inside. The owner comes and says, I cannot believe God sent you. I've been asking God to send somebody. I know who you are. My daughter has devils. She's upstairs. She is naked. I have to keep four huge men that I trust with her 24 hours a day because she will run. She will hurt herself. She will kill herself. And she is stronger than two of them. I have to keep four there at a time. Dr. Summerall walks upstairs, sees the girl. The girl begins to speak to him. She cannot speak English, but the demons speak to him in perfect English. What are you here to do? Dr. Summerall tells him, shut up. By the blood of Jesus, come out of her. All of those devils come out of that girl. She looks around and says, Daddy, who are they? What are they doing here? She was set free. Amen. Amen. They clothed her. Dr. Summerall, they drove him back to his vehicle, got in his plane. He flew all the way back home. He would have never hesitated to obey God like that because he believed in the power Amen. of God Amen. existing Amen. in his body. Amen. Because of that, he never had to buy a car. It was always given to him. He never even bought a home. They were given to him. He obeyed God so much in power that God would just show him blessing. God is good. Amen. Father, we thank you that we have your power. Do you thank him with me? Amen. Father, we thank you that we have your power. Lord, we thank you that we have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That power is in our bodies right now. We believe it. We have the power of the gospel, the power of the cross. We have the power of the blood, the power of the word, the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe it and receive it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen.